Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the presentation. It is entitled Advanced Forex Trading Tactics. Now, what we're going to do is sort of, uh, you know, fill all the gaps that uh, that still may be present uh, within your knowledge of trading Forex, but also sort of expand your mind outside of the um, two-dimensional uh, candlestick chart. What I want to cover is how to use information that uh, lies outside the Forex market, but also um, what happens in other time frames. So I'm going to show you how to use multiple time frames, uh, multiple markets, and uh, and then of course how to trade uh, things like uh, unique situations as uh, uh, news announcements. So uh, I hope you, uh, I hope this uh, takes you all the way to the end as far as everything you possibly need to know about trading forex. Okay. Oh, guess I need my charts to advance. Hello. There we go. Now let me remind you that the purpose of these presentations are, is education. There are no trade recommendations. However, it will teach you how to uh, use technical and fundamental analysis to put together trade plans throughout the day. Now if you're going to trade along with this methodology, do so using a demo account. Now everybody knows trading and investing is risky business. It's common sense. Even a five-year-old knows that. However, Forex is unique because you're leveraged 101 or even quite a bit more. So as an amateur trader, once in a while, you may get lucky and that leverage will work for you. But more often than not, that leverage will work against you. So do not trade real money. Do not trade real money until you have a track record of success using a demo account. And le again, let me be clear, any of the methodology that you see um, here, you should practice on a demo account and not use until you are successful with it. Now, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief Currency Coach of FXBootCamp.com. I'm also a Commodities Trading Advisor, which is a fancy way of saying that the uh, regulatory agencies in, here in the United States have deemed me an expert in technical and fundamental analysis. And I can give uh, professionals uh, investing advice and uh, also thereby amateurs. Now, the name of my company is fxbootcamp.com. We're a live trading organization, and uh, over 12 hours a day, we hold people's hands and teach them how to do the fundamental and technical analysis and apply it into the real market as the market's moving in real time. We're not talking about what happened yesterday, but what's probably going to happen in the next uh, hour or so and help you develop trade plans, whether you're bullish or bearish, and, uh, and teach you to understand how and why. Now, the methodologies that are, uh, um, that are going to be outlined in this presentation and the other presentations are uh, in this book, the Strategic and Tactical Forex Trading Book, um, and uh, it's a uh, top seller on the uh, foreign exchange uh, subcategory on Amazon.com and is also uh, the featured book on many sites including uh, FXStreet.com. Now here's the agenda. Let me let me ask you if you find this interesting. I want to talk about chaos theory. I want to talk about fractal geometry. I want to talk about swing and scalp trading and also how to trade the news. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's amazing for a Forex trader, right? I hope you're sitting there going, holy moly, that's everything I would totally want to know. Well, see, I can't teach you any of these advanced things until you have, uh, you know, a common understanding of the basics um, and, uh, and a common language so you understand what I'm telling you. So I think at this point, after hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours uh, of videos, that uh, now it's time to get down to business, roll up our sleeves and get to work. And that's basically what this is, how to take the knowledge and uh, put it to practice. Okay, so I hope you look at this agenda and go, <laughs> right on, man, right on. Well, bring it on. Okay, profiteer engineer, chaos theory, and fractal geometry. Let, let's let's cover that. I mean, wow, chaos theory. Can you imagine if you uh, if someone came up to you at a dinner party and said, "Hey, so what do you do?" Or, oh yeah, I use chaos theory and fractal geometry and apply it to the currency markets to extract profits. You know, it sounds like you're an engineer. Well, you are an engineer. Okay, I don't trade by gut feeling because uh, my gut feeling is terrible. Okay, my my gut feeling is exactly wrong no matter what I do. Okay, exactly wrong when I go long, exactly wrong when I go short. So I have no um, gut feeling. I'm not a trader. I'm a profiteer. I'm an engineer. Okay, what I do is very scientific, and that's what I mean by this uh, profiteer engineer. Let's apply science. Let's apply the rules of nature to our trading, right? Like how we separate price action from market action. Yeah, we're trying to line things up so we can find the path of least resistance and float down the river of Forex, right? So chaos theory, what is that? Well, chaos theory, um, well, it's sort of a, a terrible name, really, because it sounds like um, 
well, chaos by definition is, you know, something that is totally, um, something that you can't, you can never understand. Now, chaos theory says that you can understand complex systems, okay, where there seems like, if you look at it from afar, like the, like, like the currency market, um, since every variable in the world can affect it, how could you possibly make sense? of it, right? If there's a coup d'etat in Thailand and that affects, you know, if there's a bomb in London or um, or the President of the United States has a heart attack, all these random things can really affect the Forex market. So it seems like, you know, when you when you study something like the global financial system and that uh, uh, almost every variable, variable out there can affect price and valuations, it seems like you could never possibly understand that, that chaos, right? But chaos theory says you can break it down into pieces and you can study pieces of it and you'll find patterns. Therefore, you can slowly learn how to understand the greater complexity of, the, in this case, the global financial market system. So we're going to use that chaos theory. Okay, we're going to use this study of nonlinear systems to help you trade Forex with a little bit more sort of engineering behind it and not gut feeling. Okay. Now, what is fractal geometry? You know, fractal geometry means you can break things down to the smallest element and all that information is there. So imagine you had a 10 megapixel camera and then you drop down to a 1 megapixel picture, but all that, pic all that information is still there. You'll still see the trees and the rocks and the suns and the sunshine and all of that, but maybe the details aren't that great. And then you'll drop down, let's say you drop down to 1 pixel. Imagine if all that information is still there. That's what a fractal is. Now, how do I apply that to the currency markets? Well, we're going to talk about multiple time frames, which is fractal geometry. So the, the way that I teach you how to use a 15-minute chart is the same way I use uh, the same methodology I use on a one-minute chart. It's the same methodology I use on a one-hour chart, daily chart, weekly chart, okay? The only difference is, you know, what your point of view. See, a chart, a, a candlestick chart is simply price and time of a valuation between two currency pairs, right? It's just price and time. That's all it is. But from what point of view are you looking at it? From a one-minute point of view or for a one-week point of view? Now, the methodology is applied, so the mathematics or science or whatever behind it, um, it, it works on all these different time frames, but it's really how do you use the multiple time frames together and that's the fractal geometry I want to teach you today and this is where you know for example I constantly use at least a minimum of a 15 minute chart one minute chart and a one hour chart okay but then I always I always also use weekly charts and daily charts and one hour charts and two hour charts and four hour charts and you know you can use a five minute chart a three minute chart a two minute chart one minute chart you need to understand how to use these all together if you're going to be a professional forex trader okay imagine right now you might only be looking at the euro US and you might always trade a 15 minute chart and you don't you have no idea what's happening on these other time frames or on these other currencies and like I'm going to show you even what's happening in the other markets can be very very important to you okay so I hope this is an eye opener have you ever heard of the butterfly effect butterfly effect yeah you can't talk about carious theory without the butterfly effect here's what here's the theory a butterfly in uh, Indiana flaps its wings and creates a monsoon in India. Okay? A random variable that could even the smallest little change can affect big, large systems. Chaos theory. Random variables can have a huge impact in your Forex trading. Okay? Like, I, uh, let's take, for example, ooh, uh, how about a hurricane? Now, we did this at FX Bootcamp, and we do it every year, you know, during hurricane season. We actually pull up um, information from satellite data to track and even predict uh, when and where hurricanes are going to land, uh, um, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico or onto the, uh, the continent itself. Well, why would this be important to a Forex trader? It seems totally random. Hey, Wayne, I thought you were a Forex trader. Yeah, but l listen to me. Here's what happens. If, if that hurricane which is a, a, a variable out there. It has nothing to do with the financial markets, though, right? Well, maybe it does. What if that hurricane goes into the Gulf of Mexico and stops the, the shipment of oil, so it shuts down the supply lines, damages um, the oil platforms out there, and suddenly the United States is cut off from its oil supply? You know, that actually happened um, in the southeast United States after those two hurricanes slammed into Texas. 
uh, you know, most of Georgia went without gasoline for uh, about a week. In fact, you could you could have driven down, let's say, one of the main drags down Atlanta, for example, and uh, seen 20 or 30 gas stations in a row with no gasoline. Holy moly. <laughs> you okay? Well, what's the cause and effect of this? Well, commodity prices are based on supply and demand. If there's lots of demand, it's sort of like an auction. Everyone needs it and prices go up. But also supply is a big problem. Okay? If everyone needs oil and gasoline, but there's hardly any available, then it goes to the highest bidder and prices go up. Well, what does that matter to a currency trader? You're like, Wayne, well, I'm just a humble, you know, currency trader. Yeah, well, guess what? These things can affect uh, currencies. So, for example, the Canadians make a lot of money off of oil. So when oil prices are high, since they're a net exporter and they send almost all their oil to the United States, okay, and Canada is second in the world only to Saudi Arabia as far as the amount of oil they have. And they make a lot of money when oil prices are high because it, they're pumping it out of the ground every single day, whether oil prices are 40 or 140. <laughs> People are doing the same thing. It's the same equipment. It's the only difference is how much profit they're going to make, right? So if a hurricane comes in to Louisiana, shuts down um, you know, uh, the oil supply lines and, and the uh, plat oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico and therefore cuts off the supply lines and therefore the, the, the result of that means oil prices go super high. Guess what? Canadians are, are the ones that are going to benefit. Yeah, the Americans are going to hurt because their prices are going to go up and they're not going to have the oil they need to run their factories and their businesses and their cars and stuff, right? So they're going to pay more at the pump and yet the Canadians, all that, all that money is going to just rain out of the sky. And guess what? The Canadian dollar could gain value. So yeah, you know, something random is like, uh, you know, a, a storm that's forming off of the tip of Africa and heading out into the Atlantic. You know what? Three weeks later, the Canadian dollar could gain in value because of it. <laughs> And how about this? The U.S. stock market tanks and the U.S. dollar gains value. Wow. All kinds of things. What, what does that mean? Then the 10-year the T-note could go up. So you're going long oil. You're going long the 10-year T-note. You're shorting the stock market. You're buying Canadian dollars. You're buying U.S. dollars. Uh, you're buying J Japanese yen. And you're selling everything else. I mean, you're like, wow. And it just is the storm. That's what chaos theory is. Okay, it's these random things out there that are having big impacts on your currency trading if you're smart about it. And that's why I bring it to you today. So, chaos theory is the study of nonlinear dynamic systems. They're changing. Nonlinear. We don't have you ever seen a straight line in Forex? I don't think I, I've ever seen a straight line. So, for example, let's say um, based on your analysis, you said uh, uh, the Euro USD is falling. Okay, I say, hey, what's going on with Euro USD? Oh, well, I'm bearish on that pair. Good. Let's say, uh, let's say you're bearish on it uh, based on an hourly chart or something. So you're like, yeah, right now for the last few days it's been bearish. The market is bearish. The market is going down for that Euro USD. But how often within that period of days is the Euro USD actually going up, even though overall it's falling? I know all the time, okay? I mean, by definition, um, a trend, let's say a downtrend, uh, is a series of lower lows lo and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs, right? Let's see if I can get a, a pen here, okay? Right? Lower, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high. That's a trend, okay? So by definition, it happens all the time, right? Oh, great. How do I get rid of that market? There we go. Okay. So by definition, it goes up all the time in a falling market. That's nonlinear. A falling market isn't straight down and never comes back. It always comes back. Okay. Nonlinear systems. So in Forex, it's a series of higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and, lo and lower lows, right? Now, what's more important is why do these things change? And really, quite often, it's the relationship uh, between commodities and currencies and news and economies and all these random variables actually have a relationship and the better you understand the relationship 
the better you're going to be a forex trader. So you just back yourself out and remind yourself that uh, foreign exchange is what we trade. Okay, we always call it forex or fx. No, it's foreign exchange of currencies. So currencies only change value if they're crossing international borders. So the question is, why do they cross international borders? Is it American companies repatriating their money back to the United States because the government is giving them a, a deal? You know what? That happened a few years ago. The government said, okay, we won't, you know, demand for the U.S. dollar is really low, and we realize that you're going to be taxed 40% or whatever it was if you bring that money back from your foreign subsidiaries, but we need we need that money back in the U.S. economy. So what they did is instead they said to, uh, to the multinational corporations in the United States like Coca-Cola and IBM and all them, I, I think they one year they cut them a deal, and they're like, instead of paying 40% taxes, you'll pay like 8% taxes, and boom, all that money came from international subsidiaries back to the, the you know, to back to the motherland, right? Um, back cross crossing back into the U.S. banks, and for that they had to sell the local currency and buy the U.S. dollar, and the, the U.S. dollar gained strength. Or let's say all the money is going to Canada uh, because of oil prices, or all the money is going to Australia because of gold prices, or something like that, or wherever, right? As long as the money is flowing around the globe, global money flow, then values are going to change. So you, what you should do is not just sit at your charts and say to yourself, oh, well, technically speaking, uh, the U.S. dollar is strong right now. You, you should ask yourself why, and it's all always based on global money flow. The better you understand global money flow, the better of a currency trader you're going to be because you understand why the valuations are changing, not just that they are. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the relationships. All right, how about let's take the broad index of the U.S. stock market, the S&P 500. All right, 500 stocks in the U.S. economy. Great. Wonderful. Now, it goes up and down, up and down, and up and down, depending on whether people are buying or selling stocks, right? But look at this, the euro yen will also go up and down, up and down in a very similar fashion. Uh, now, correlations always change, but, uh, you know, for the longest time is, you know, mid to high 80% of the time if the euro USD, or sorry, if the S&P 500 was going up, the euro yen was going up. And if the S&P 500 was going down very, 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 very often, the euro yen would uh, also go down. Okay, a direct correlation. Okay. You know, and like I said, you know, let's say 83% of the time, if you knew the euro, uh, if the S&P 500 was going up 83% of the time, there was a good probability that uh, the euro yen would go up too. But we're talking about the U.S. stock market versus the currency from the euro, the eurozone, versus the currency in Japan. What does the European Union and the Japanese economy have to do with the S&P 500, the broad index of stocks in the United States? It seems... Totally random, doesn't it? You could scratch your head and say, "Wait, that doesn't make sense. Why would the U.S. stock market go up and then the euro uh, yen would go up?" Well, it's the relationship, okay? It's the relationship. So imagine you're a hedge fund manager, and uh, and the stock market's been rising for the last few weeks, and you've been making good money on the on the U.S. stock market going up and up and up. Now you're saying, "Yeah, I got to take all my money out of the safe havens, take them out of bonds and stuff like that, and get them into higher risk uh, things like you know the stock market." It's higher risk, but greater reward. But the people are traders and investors are feeling really good. They're pouring money in the U.S. stock market. Where are they taking the money out of? Hey, well, safe havens, right? Things like uh, they don't have it sitting in a bank account because they earn hardly any interest, but maybe they bought bonds, right? They bought bonds. Well, if the stock market's rallying and they're feeling good about it, hey, they sell the bonds, they take the money, dump it into the stock market, right? So there's a relationship right there. The stock market rises and the bond market falls because they're selling their bonds and then putting the money into the U.S. stock market and the stock market rises. Very interesting. But the other thing is it's their attitude. They say, wow, things are going good. Everything's rallying in the stock market. We're putting money to work. Forget about the 5% return on investment. They want the 25% return uh, percent return on investment by investing in the stock market. But maybe they're investing into other higher uh, higher risk but higher return assets. Maybe they're investing overseas. Okay, maybe they're buying uh, other sorts of things like uh, I don't know, fic, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, core core solid assets like uh, gold and uh, maybe real estate or whatever. Okay, so they're it's their attitude. They're they 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 don't mind the risk because they're going after the reward. They feel confident. Okay, now if you're a hedge fund, you want to leverage your money. So let's say you got a billion dollars in lever in uh, 
client funds, but now you want to go out and leverage that. Maybe you can get thirty billion dollars if you if you just ponied up the one billion, okay, as collateral, and then boom, get more funds and go out and invest it. It's just like you popping money into a currency account, and let's say you put uh, you know a thousand bucks into a forex account. Most uh, brokers will let you trade at least a hundred thousand, maybe even two, three, or four hundred thousand, even though you only got one thousand. So let's say you know a hedge fund wanted to do the same thing. They uh, they decide to borrow some Japanese yen because historically they've been by far the cheapest money you can buy, charging almost zero. And for the longest time, the money was totally free. So imagine you're a hedge fund manager. You got a billion dollars, but if you borrowed money from Japan, you know, a couple of years ago, it was totally free. They're like, you showed up, and you're like, yeah, I got a billion dollars I want to use as collateral. Psh, loan me some money. Hey, it's interest free. I mean, it's totally free, right? Or even now, it's hardly anything less than 1%. Come on. So they, they borrow against that collateral. Now they're leveraged, right? But now if they borrow Japanese yen, what are they going to do with the yen? They don't want the yen. They just borrowed it. That's what the bank gave them. That's, that was the local currency they borrowed from. So they take that yen, and then they put it to work. Maybe they buy into the Chinese stock market, or maybe they buy gold, or they do something, okay? Now, that, that's what they were doing last year, and right now they're, they're doing the exact opposite. But I want you to understand the relationship, okay? So what happens to the Japanese yen if, if hedge funds around the world are borrowing billions and billions and tens of billions, hundreds of billions of yen, trillions of yen? They're borrowing it, right, because they're, they're, they're getting the Japanese loans, and then they're investing it, which means they've got to sell the yen to buy what they really want. Okay, the higher risk but higher reward asset, whatever it is. Okay, it could be the stock market, it could be gold, oil, real estate, whatever. So they're selling the yen. Okay, so look at that. If the stock market's going up, in, uh, the appetite for risk is increased because hedge funds want reward, and in fact, everyone wants greater reward, right? So the stock market goes up, the bonds fall, then hedge funds go to uh, places like Japan borrow a whole bunch of money, now they're stuck with yen they don't want, and they dump the yen in order for buying what they really want, the high return asset. Because remember, if they borrow the yen, they're only going to earn like less than a half a percent right now interest. They don't want that. They want something greater. So they, they sell the yen to buy what they really want, okay? Which just might be the U.S. stock market again, okay? But just leverage this time. So the, if everyone is selling trillions of yen, then the valuation of the yen okay goes down just it's just you're getting flooded with Japanese yen the yen almost becomes worthless right that's it okay that's that's how it works so if the Japanese yen is on the right side of the euro yen what happens to the euro yen goes up it has nothing to do with the euro it's just that the yen is weak why is the yen weak because hedge funds are borrowing it and dumping it on the market and why is that happening? Because the S&P 500 is going up and the and bonds are falling. So it's really funny. The, it's very interesting. Not funny. It's very interesting, the relationship. So the, the euro yen isn't really going up. It's just the yen itself is falling because the S&P 500 is going up. Wow, what an interesting thing, <laughs> okay? I'm telling you, Forex is the best job in the world. It's intellectually stimulating, and if you can trade it conservatively and profitably, it pays too well. You just got to give it years to really fully understand all these relationships. So that's what uh, that's one of my chart setups right here. Let me take you through it. On the left here, EURUSD 15-minute chart. They're all 15-minute charts, actually. EURUSD, USD Yen, Dow Jones. Here's the 10-year T-note, the bond market, right? Treasuries, bond market, fixed income. Over here, light, sweet, crude. Yeah, that's oil. And over here is gold. Okay? They're all 15-minute charts, and I watch them in real time all day, all the time. Okay? I might not buy or sell Japanese yen pairs unless I know what the stock market's doing or unless I know what the uh, the treasury market's doing because of everything I just explained. So if I saw the euro yen going up, but the stock market was falling, I might say to myself, hmm, it's going the wrong way. I either need to find out why the euro's really strong or start looking for tops on that pair because it's going to come back around. So let's, so again, let's talk about how this works. If the stock market is rising, 
Okay, that means hedge funds are doing really well. They're they're taking money out of the bond market and they're dump, they're plowing it into the stock market, and it's because it's rallying. And that's where they want. They want to go where the greatest return is. That's their job, right? It's th their job is to take the riskier trades. So they're taking the money out of the stock market. And the, you, right here, you can see the bond market for a lot of this day really tanked, and yet the stock market went up. So see the relationship? Very similar. So the bond market's falling and the stock market's rallying. That's a relationship that goes back to the beginning of time, the beginning of trading. Okay, so they're, they're dumping their, their safe haven low yield assets and they're plowing it into high risk high return assets there's the relationship so what could you say to yourself well the japanese yen should be falling at that same time okay why because you know that if they're leveraging their trades the japanese yen is uh is going to fall because they're going to take that yen and then convert it into whatever high yield asset they want okay same thing what if uh like I said before, if oil goes up, it could hurt a lot of economies. That could drag the U.S. stock market down. It could drag the, the Japanese stock market down because they have to pay more for oil and they have to import 99% of their oil. So regardless of price, Japan's got to keep buying. All right, They can't hedge, so to speak. Or if gold goes up, well, anyone that exports gold is going to make a killing on it because they already built the mine. They're already pulling it out of the ground. Okay, the only thing that's changed is the price that they're selling it for. So if, if oil price or if gold prices are high, like it was at eleven hundred dollars for a while, you know what? It takes years to build a gold mine. Okay, when I was in China, one of the guys that uh, was with me during my envoy owned a gold mine in Canada. It's great, but it takes decades and decades and decades, you know, to, to build these facilities. It's a lot of money. But if you happen to be selling when it's peak, then all it is is greater profit. So who sells a lot of gold? Australia, South Africa, okay? And these, these uh, exporters of gold are going to benefit greatly, okay? So let's go through. Let me give you some examples. Okay? These are four-hour candles, okay? Because I haven't taught you how to use multiple time frames at once, I'm going to give you really simple charts. On the left is the Euro USD four hour candle okay over here is the S&P 500 four hour candles these were just taken a day or two ago so I didn't go back through a thousand charts looking for something that that totally fits into my theory okay this is just literally the last trades I looked at okay so on the left okay it goes up it pauses comes down moves sideways look at this S&P 500 goes up moves sideways drops and sort of move sideways okay not perfect but come on those charts are very 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 similar aren't they it, when the when the euro usd was going up the s&p 500 was going up interesting right why does the usd weaken well what what's happening is yeah sure hedge funds are putting money into the stock market but because they want high risk right that's what they want they want high risk so for the greater returns so they also take their money out of the united states and put it to play to work in places like well i don't know let's say brazil or china or russia that those types of places right india they're, they're plowing money anywhere they can plow it so that means a lot of the money is 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 being exported outside the united states and therefore the value of the u.s dollar is falling more money is flowing out than flowing in so to speak right and when the stock market falls guess what it doesn't seem to make any sense at all but when the u.s stock market falls the u.s dollar almost always gains strength it doesn't make sense but what's happening is uh if the stock market's falling, maybe to cover um, cover losses or margin calls and redemptions and all that kind of stuff, hedge funds and mutual funds or whatever, got to take the money out of those foreign countries and bring it back to the United States. And therefore, the demand for the dollar is high and the stock market's tanking. It doesn't seem to make sense, but that's the variable. That's out there. Okay? The stock market's just been tanking for months now and the US dollar has not been the strong in years and it's because the dollar's falling okay isn't it strange 
but what what so if the stock market's falling and they're getting out of their risky trades so they're dumping the foreign stock markets our stock market's falling but what's what's been happening in the last few months bonds have been rallying because hedge funds are then taking their money and they're stuffing it in the bonds even the fed is buying bonds like crazy and right now the 10-year t-note is at like a all-time high all time it's never been this high it's just crazy okay so look at that interesting relationship four hour candles that goes for several weeks okay and and they they mimic each other very close it's not perfect but you can clearly see there's a relationship so for example I'll watch the S&P 500 and if it's going up I might be selling the US dollar because that's really what's happening it's not that the euro usd is going up it's not that the euro is getting stronger than the usd it's that the usd is weakening as money's flowing out of the united states and into riskier uh, assets because hedge funds are confident because the s p 500 is rising well just amazing stuff right it's oh man i wish someone told me this like 20 years ago <laughs> okay it took me a long time to, to to learn these relationships how about this the euro yen on the left now the euro yen and the 10-year t-note 10-year t-note is skyrocketing there 124 that's unbelievably high like i said these are very very recent charts guys 124 is unbelievably high okay unbelievably high just incredibly high which means the stock markets are just tanking but that means there's a bear market in the stock market and there's a bull market in the treasury market, which means you can make money. You're not supposed to lose money in this situation. You're supposed to just make money in a different way. If the stock market's falling, you can short the stock market, right? You can buy USD. Well, what about, uh, we know if the stocks are falling, the bonds are rising. Buy some bonds for crying out loud. So here's the bond market going up and up and up. This is the 10-year T-note, the Treasury. I like it because it's not short-term. It's not long-term. It's not like a 30-year bond. It's right in the middle. Okay, so it, but it represents the overall relationship between stocks and bonds. If you see a rally like this, remember they're four-hour candles, up and up and up sideways, up and up and up and up and up sideways, up and up and up. That is a bullish market. Look at the same time frame, same four-hour candles, the same time the euro yen is tanking. Why? The stock market is falling. So if the stock market's falling, hedge funds are getting out of risky assets. Well, remember they got trillions of dollars with the loans or trillions of yen worth of loans from the Bank of Japan? Well, if they're dumping those assets, then they got to get out of those le out of that leverage, right? So they pay all those loans back. Well, what do they pay back the Bank of Japan with? Pesos? South African Rand? <laughs> you know? No! Yen! So suddenly all these hedge funds around the world are buying up the yen like crazy to pay back their loans because they're dumping the risky assets because the U.S. stock market is falling. Bonds rise. And the Japanese yen gains strength. So again, it's not that the euro yen's falling. It's that the Japanese yen itself is super strong because the value of the 10-year T-notes going up because the U.S. stock market is falling. Woo! Just unbelievable stuff, huh? You can look at the 10-year T-note and replace that with sort of like a, an index for the Japanese yen. If I see the uh, the S&P 5 or sorry, if I see the 10-year T-note rising, I'm 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 thinking to myself the Japanese yen is probably gaining strength. And so not only will I open the euro yen looking for a short opportunity, but I'll open up the euro yen, I'll open up the pound yen, I'll open up the kiwi yen, I'll open up the Aussie yen, I'll look uh, open up the CAD yen you know anything with a yen on it and i'm looking to buy yen because i figure this if um that the hedge funds are just buying yen like crazy and i want to get in on that okay how about this on the left light sweet crude that's oil on the right usd cad again four hour candles very very recent charts in fact right there it says 43 dollars and 70 cents on oil okay all right so that's just uh, not that long ago at all so what tell me are those two charts similar well they're not perfectly the same right they're not mirror images okay but one can lead the other or more importantly you can have an understanding of the relationship so what's happening to the value of oil on the left there remember they're four hour candles so for one two three four five days straight it's been falling five, what is that one Okay, out of six days, five of the days have been down days for oil. Clearly a down day, right? Down, 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 down for oil. So, remember I said Canada benefits from high oil? 
What happens when uh, oil is falling? Well, they're not benefiting as much, right? That sucks money out of the, uh, out of the uh, Canadian economy. So over here is the USD CAD. Oil's falling. Is the American market benefiting from it? Well, it may. It might be. First of all, oil, a low oil price is good for the, for the American market, right? The largest consumer of gasoline and oil in the world. Yeah, they're going to benefit, right? What if the stock market's also falling during this time? Then, then we know the U.S. dollar is probably gaining strength. So you might already have a bias for dollar strength based on your analysis of the 10-year T-note in the stock market. But then you flip over and you're like, oh, but, and oil's tanking. So you're like, wow, the dollar is probably strong because of the T-note and because of the S&P 500. You're already looking to buy dollars. Then you see the value of oil falling and you're like, wow, that'll hurt the Canadians. Whatever. I don't know the exact situation here. Okay. But in the basic terms, if oil prices are falling, you could say to yourself, boy, I wonder if the, the Canadian dollar is losing value. Well, you could see the USD CAD is rising, which means the USD is stronger than the Canadian dollar. And they look very similar. Maybe not as steep, but there is clearly some sort of relationship between the two. And then how about this? On the left, Aussie dollar versus US dollar and gold. Okay, are they per exactly the same? On these are four-hour candles. No, they're not exactly the same. But I hope I you can see a relationship where for uh, two or three days gold was flat and then crashed and then sort of flattened out again. How about this? Uh, you, you, Aussie US Aussie versus the USD was up for a while, sort of flattened out and then crashed and then sort of moved sideways again. Not perfectly correlated, but the understanding the relationship that the Aussies benefit from selling gold at higher prices. And they don't benefit as much as when selling gold at low prices. So if gold is falling, that can hurt the value of the Aussie dollar. Will it happen all the time? No. Does it happen most of the time? Yes. So if you understand the relationship and you have a gold chart up in real time and you see suddenly gold starts to plummet, you can say to yourself, hmm, I wonder what's happening to the Aussie dollar. Is the Aussie dollar losing value? And if you find out the Aussie dollar is weak, then just go out and find something strong. Well, what if the yen happens to be strong at the time? Now you got a strong yen, and now you know there's a weak Aussie dollar. Maybe you should go short the Aussie yen. See what I mean? Because the Japanese yen would be strong. Maybe because simply the 10-year T-notes rising because the stock market's falling. And maybe um, the Aussie dollar is weak because of gold prices falling. So you got one, you know, basically the 10-year T-notes going up and gold is going down, you short the Aussie yen. Or at least in your mind, you say to yourself, I'm going to create a trade plan based on that assumption. That's what a trade plan is, and then you go look for technical reasons to get into a trade. But you have to start with the fundamental bias created by the global money flow. Okay? Whew, isn't that interesting? Now let me tell you right here, correlations change all the time. That's why at FX Bootcamp we have a quantitative analyst, Kurt Worley, who studies all this stuff. And I say, Kurt, give me the numbers. Give me the uh, what's the currency correlations on these things right now. And we, we constantly stay on top of it because the relationships can change. Okay, but the thing is, there are relationships, but all relationships do change. So currently. The, some of the relationships that we've been seeing uh, at FX Bootcamp are things like when the stock market's down, the 10-year T-notes up, right? Stocks down, bonds up. The stock market's falling, money's being taken out of riskier places and stuffed into uh, the treasury market, which is a safe haven backed by the U.S. government. So to do that, whether uh, hedge funds are repatriating money or foreigners are sending money to U.S. banks, either way, demand for USD goes up, right? And the bond market goes up because that's the safe haven. Maybe gold goes up if they're pushing money, uh, if they're buying gold as an anti-inflationary hedge, or maybe they're putting money into the Swiss franc, which is a pseudo um, gold standard. See there, when they print money, they have to back up a certain percentage of it with a hard asset like gold or silver or something like that. So it's not a pure fiat currency system over there. It's, it's a hybrid gold standard, which is kind of interesting. Plus, hey, Swiss bank account, Swiss haven, right? Uh, safe haven. In any case, maybe the CAD goes up too because maybe they're taking money out of stocks and maybe they're plowing it into commodities. We don't know. Not always, but that's what you maybe can look for. And, of course, we know if the stock market's down, 10-year T-notes up, you're probably looking for at the Japanese yen going up. And if the Japanese yen is going up, it means the yen pairs are likely to go down. And then you go start looking for something weak to trade versus the strong yen.
See what I mean? You can watch the stock market, you can watch the treasury market, and purely trade it as a currency trader. You could simply say, stock market's tanking, 10-year notes going up, I should start looking to dump any uh, yen pair. Maybe you want to short the pound yen, maybe you want to short the euro yen, short the Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, CAD yen, czar yen, <laughs> Mexican dollar yen, <laughs> you know, whatever. You start looking at yens because in your mind you're thinking, I liked the Japanese yen at the moment because of the stock market in the United States. Crazy, right? So let's talk about fractals. How do you create that trade plan? Fractal geometry. Remember what I said? It's looking at multiple time frames. The price, right? The price of the currency and time. Price and time is the only thing that you see in a candlestick chart. It's price and time, but from what point of view? All right? This is sort of borrowing from quantum physics and quantum mechanics, all right? The, it, everything is relative. From what point of view are you looking? So if somebody said to you, hey, so what's the EURUSD doing? Well, if you're watching a one-minute chart, it may be up. If you're watching a 15-minute chart, it may be down. If you're watching a, a one-hour chart, it may be up. If you're watching a four-hour chart, it may be down. If you're watching a weekly chart, it might be up. And you're like, so, well, depends. What time frame are you watching? It depends, right? Your point of view. That's the fractal. But everything is in there in that chart time and price now how do you use those fractals together how do you put time and price together okay so remember if the market's falling or price is falling it's, well the market's still price right it's just the value of the currency so the only difference is time so how, how do you take the value of the currency and time put them together to create a trade plan okay so let's take a look I want to teach you swing trading yeah, swing trading. Now, my definition of swing trading is simply a trade where you're trading the market only. So, I don't want the market to change every two seconds, <laughs> like price can change, right? I don't want up and down, up and down, up and down. I want sort of medium term moving averages. Okay. Now you can use uh, medium term averages on on uh, on a 15 minute chart or a higher end chart, like a, a four hour. Either way, you're still measuring the market. From uh, f by standing back a little bit, seeing the forest from the trees. Okay, I like the 2155 for that. Okay, you can also use what happened the previous day or the previous week, depending on what time frame you're looking. And very nicely, uh, swing trading very often happens over uh, at the open of the European session. Okay, so like on a especially on a daily basis, my friend. Let's say something happened overnight and the whole currency world wants to dump uh, the U.S. dollar. Well. It's when the London boys are going to log in. That's when you're going to see a lot of the action start, and maybe it'll carry all day, or maybe it'll even go for weeks. So you'll see that a lot of the swings happen right after the European um, market okay, open. So watch that. Let's say 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's a little. That's pre new. I, I, you could also watch um, like midnight, okay, midnight Eastern time. Okay, so anyway, so let's take a look at this. That's the 2155. You see, the 21 for a while there is below the 55, and that means the market is falling. That's that's how you can swing trade. Use a medium term, um, a medium term moving average combination, and you don't even really care about price because you know if you decide that the market's falling and your bias is short, so you want to look for opportunities to short. You don't care about those little pullbacks, right? You don't care that price is rising for a little while especially if it's on a shorter time frame so if this is a one hour chart and you traded 2155 cross why do you care about price rising on a 15 minute chart or a five minute chart you're just like whatever i'm trading the market couldn't give it two two hoots about price action you're only trading the market if the market's down you want to be short if the market's up you want to be long that's all you really care about okay scalp trading is different all you care about is price action. Yeah, price. That's it. You're in the moment. Momentum. Momentum of price. Moment. I use the 5, 8 for that. What's price doing right now? Oh, it's going up. Then go long. Oh, now price is falling. Good. Go short. Very, very short-term trades, okay? Uh, when I'm scalp trading, I'm usually trading just the one-minute chart. You'd be surprised, though. Now, the standard definition of a scalp trade, uh, you know, the common one that I hear from people is where you're taking five, six, seven pips at a time. Now, let me be honest and open up, uh, uh, open and honest with you, right? I think that's silly. I think that's stupid, actually. 
to work that hard and take that much risk for eight pips doesn't make any sense to me okay only an amateur would do that what I'm talking about is making your final decision based on a one minute chart I'll show you how I can commonly scalp a hundred pips out of the market using a one minute chart Ah, but the catch here is I'm not totally using the one minute chart I'm using fractal geometry I might be setting up and pulling the trigger based on what I see on a one minute chart but I'm also using a 15 minute chart I'm also using an hourly chart I might have a weekly or a four hour bias already set in let's say I see a 2155 cross on a four hour chart to the downside okay I'm bearish I know that I don't have to look at that chart more than once a week okay 2155 on a four hour doesn't cross that often so when that happens I might say to myself okay I'm bearish and based on a, a one hour of 15 minute and one minute I'm only going to look for opportunities to short so then suddenly I get a 5-8 cross to the downside on a one hour chart what does that tell me well now price action is to the downside on the one hour if the same thing happens on a 15 minute chart now I only have to wait for the one minute chart so it looks like I'm taking a 5 8 cross on a on a one minute chart and, I, and we pull the trigger and all of a sudden it moves 100 pips and it looks like magic you know, whoa wow that guy can scalp 100 pips I mean, you know what I'm just entering in um, a, a trade that's very 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 refined down to a, let's say something like a 5 8 cross or even a stochastic cross on a one minute chart but then suddenly it looks like you get lucky and just it takes off it didn't do anything for two hours and then suddenly you pull the trigger and then the thing moves uh, 100 pips you're like wow what a great scalp well it's because that whole trade plan started on a four hour chart and you just work your way down the time frames that's what it is okay so as I say here refined entries for spot trading so you can scalp your way into a spot trade which is usually set up on a 15 minute chart and then that 15 minute chart can align itself up with a one hour and the one hour can align itself up with the you know four hour the daily the weekly they all start lining up and it's really cool and when they're all lined up then your odds of success are better and suddenly you get lucky a lot pulling the trigger on the one minute chart instead of getting eight pips like a true scalper um, you'll see that um, a patient disciplined trader that will wait for a setup like that is not going to get eight pips but they're going to get 80 or more okay just because of the multiple time frames <clears throat> okay so there's a 5-8 cross that that's a scalp trade right so as soon as uh, the 5 moved above the 8 uh, that's when the price in the moment is up then it's down and then it's up and still and just crossed out so for example that could have been an entry here and an exit here all right you'd also know if you know how to use Fibonacci if you drew there that that was probably a 50% to a 618 retracement then you pulled the trigger on a 5a cross to the upside and probably okay and that probably went to a 2618 okay I can see the Fibonacci just with my eyes <laughs> with my mind but anyways that could have been a trade plan based purely on the moment okay and if you're bias okay now I don't know what candles these are let's say it's a one minute chart what if uh, if you're watching an hourly chart and you're based on your analysis of the hourly chart you said to yourself this pair is bullish you're only bullish on this pair based on a one hour chart so based on your one hour chart analysis what if you only took five eight crosses on a one minute chart or a two minute chart or a three minute chart it doesn't matter to me it's just shorter term time frame here fractal okay the time frame doesn't matter it's the only thing that's changed is your point of view so if your point of view on a one hour chart is up then what if you only took opportunities on this lower time frame to the upside as well what if you just stay bullish on this shorter time frame so if this was one minute chart maybe you're bullish here take profit go long here take profit now you're saying, wow, that's amazing. That's a good trade here on a one-minute chart. That's a fantastic trade here on a one-minute chart. Okay? Yeah, but you know what? All you're doing is going in the direction of the longer-term bias. You're just refining yourself. You're refining your trading. And that's why you get a lot more pips that way. It's the path of least resistance. So let's go through some of these uh, swing and carry trades. Sorry, swing and scalp trades. Let me take a drink of water first. Okay, let me introduce you to my good friend, uh, the currency charts. On the left here, Euro USD 15 minute chart. In the center, Euro USD 1 minute chart. In the right, Euro USD 1 hour chart with pivot points overlaid. Okay, 1 hour pivot points overlaid. Start with the higher time frames. Okay, now you can look here. If you know anything about pivot points, you hit an R1, top, 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 top four hours and some change maybe four and a half hours you're at r1 and you can't break r1 what does r1 stand for 
resistance. <laughs> resistance. And then you get a 5A cross to the downside. Okay, interesting. What does that mean? Well, that means on a one hour chart, the uh, price is falling. And you'll notice that the 21 has always stayed below the 55. So based on your analysis on a one hour chart, the market is falling and price is falling on the longer term uh, on the longer term time frame and the top of the day is an R1. That's cool, huh? That's really cool, isn't it? So what if you said to yourself up in here, what if you only want to short because of the hourly chart? So what do you do now? You move into you move into here, the 15 minute chart. Okay, so your bias is down now because of a 5.8 cross and a 21 below a 55. So give me some examples or think of, of some examples of, you know, technically why you would short a 15 minute chart now. Ooh, price dropping below 200 EMA, 21.55 cross here, good angle and separation on a 5.8. So this happened fairly early in the morning around 4,400. That's up in here, guys. You see that? 21.55 crossed around 4,400 or just after let's say 35 and a half that's up in here guys that's up in here that this hourly chart is telling you that you should be short in here and that's confirmed by breaking the long-term fair market value of the 200 EMA pulling back and riding the five all night 2155 crosses to the downside in here now technically on a one on a 15 minute chart now technically speaking it's falling. The market's falling and the price is falling on a 15-minute chart. But the market and price is also falling on a one-hour chart. This pair is going down. So you can drop into the smaller time frames. Also, you see this consolidation? Okay, the London move, and now waiting for New York, and then the New York move. Okay, notice it's just uh, moving sideways till it hits the 21, and then boom. What does the smart plan teach you? Yeah. Speed, speed of the market is down, it's just going to move back to the 20, 21. If the 21 holds, that means it's falling, it's falling fast, and you should, your confidence in short and sh shorting should be high. This is predictable, okay? And then off it goes, okay, to the downside. So what you could do is then somewhere in here or up in here or up in here, you could be using the one-minute chart to look for opportunities to fall, okay? Now look at, actually, on the shorter term, on the short, short, short term, this has been moving up, right? Things like a 5-8 a cross to the upside after a hit of a pivot point. It's kind of interesting. So in the very, very short term, for let's say two and a half hours, it looks like this pair was rising. Okay? Now, which so there, there's two things to take away from this. As soon as this happened at the beginning of the day, you should have spent the rest of the day looking for opportunities to short. Now that the New York session is over, there's a bigger pullback. So you could use the higher time frame now to say, well, how far is it going to pull back? Well, we were riding the five on the hourly here, right? Just like we did on a 15-minute chart. Look at this. Price is down to the five, sideways to the five. Down, move sideways to the five. Down, move sideways, and then now it's broken back up. Okay, probably going to pull back as high as the uh, the 21 on the hourly, or move sideways like it did here. Wait for the 21 to catch up, and then when it's dynamically resistant, it, maybe it'll push it down again tomorrow. Okay, Whew. so it can help you predict where the next level of support and resistance is going to be as well. But as soon as that 21, uh, since the as soon as the 58 crossed after hitting the R1 in a falling market, you should have been confident and pulling the trigger on the 15 minute chart all here and all here and using a one minute chart to short, short, short. Now on a 15 minute chart, you can see the 5.8 is to the upside. So right in here, if you're a shorter term, just a little spot trader, maybe you were creating trade plans and going long based on the one minute chart. Up, sideways, up, sideways, up, sideways, up. Okay, and then suddenly a lower low, you'd be out here. Okay, it just you you need to decide whether you're bullish or bearish, but it can really help you to use multiple time frames. Let's discuss this. This is Aussie dollar versus U.S. dollar. Start with a higher time frame. Okay, poor angle and separation between the 2155. It's not a good market. It's basically moving sideways. But you get a double top on an hourly chart near a pivot point and a 5.8 cross to the downside right around the psychological level of 8,300. Where's 8,300? Well, on this 15-minute chart, look at this. The bottom is 8080. 
price is currently at 81.65. The top was 83. It's so high up here on this 15 minute chart, you can't even see it. It was way above at the top here. The top of this chart is only 80, 82.40. Holy moly, and the top here was over 83. So that means as soon as this 5A crossed at a double top at a pivot point, okay, this on a 15 minute chart fell, fell, fell all night or all day, really. Okay, then it hits a pivot point. Okay, it hits the S1, the support one pivot point starts coming back up. So on a 15 minute chart, it's very interesting, huh? Now you can predict if the five breaks were going to the 21 if the 21 breaks it's going to go to the 55 so somewhere in here if you decided let's say the 21 was breaking and it was going to go back to the 55 that's 8140 you know that's a 40 or 50 pip move there you could be using the one minute chart to time this up okay if you decided based in here even just up in this area even just up in here you wanted to be bullish let's say or maybe a bounce of the pivot point or whatever whatever your bias is you can use the one minute chart or how about this? If price is rising, but because what you see on the hourly chart, or maybe even better, if you said, Wayne, based on my analysis of the four-hour chart, I think this is going to fall, then, hey, man, right on. That's good analysis. Then if you think it's going to fall, ask yourself, where is it going to fall again? Since it's over, it's been falling all night, this is just a short-term pullback, isn't it? So what if it's just pulling back to the 21? And the 21 holds, this is going to fall and make a lower low. Like this, like down, sideways, down, up, you know, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up. Maybe there's going to be a down, down, down. Where would you look for a down, down, down? Hey, how about the upper Bollinger Band 20, uh, 55 EMA on a 15-minute chart? That is also a 21 EMA on an hourly. But how would you actually get into that? Well, what's, a, what's an uptrend? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low, lower high. <whistles> so it slammed into the Bollinger Band, slammed into the 55 EMA, slammed into the one hour uh, 21 EMA, and on a one minute has now made a lower high and a lower low and is maybe on its way down. So maybe if you stayed bearish, because it was bearish all day, and this, this up and up and up didn't suck you in, maybe you're... It, you, in fact, you want to sell high, don't you? So maybe it rallies for two and a half hours, and then as soon as it hits that moving average, you dump it. Not just based on the 21, but maybe what's happening on a 15-minute chart, and maybe especially what's happening on a one-minute chart. So you, on, as soon as it made a lower low and a lower high and a new lower low, maybe you're selling. Or maybe you're going to wait for a 5-8 cross on a 15-minute chart. So it hits here, and then the 5-8 crosses to the downside. There's many different ways to be able to enter this trade, okay? But the thing is, the three time frames can help you predict where the next level of support and resistance is going to be, okay? And that's key. You need to be able to think ahead and use your analysis. So here's a pound dollar now. Same thing, 15-minute chart, one-minute chart, one-hour chart. What's happening on the hour? Is the market going up or is the market going down? Yeah, market's going up, right? 21.55 the upside. Look what's been happening here. Up, 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 sideways. Up, 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 sideways. Uh-oh. Oh. A little glitch here for a while, and then boom, it moves up. So what if you said, based on the market rising on the hourly chart, nothing more. You said the market's up on the uh, hourly chart. So on the 15-minute chart, you're only considering going long or not going long, which means you're, you're up and up and up. Take profit here. Ignore all of this. And then 5A across the upside, go long again, okay? You can also use your one-minute chart in here. So let's say this is up and up and it moves sideways, and you're thinking this is going to ride the 5. So how could you pop in another lot? Yeah, how could you add to your wins, all right? Well, how about things like, uh, you know, price coming back and uh, 5A cross up here, or a new higher high here, or an extreme uh, Stokes cross there that happens when the MACD is at the waterline. All these things could be very helpful, okay? What I'm showing you is you don't have to just wait here because you're only getting a 5A cross on a 15-minute chart every few hours, but you could use 2155 crosses or 5A crosses or MACD or stochastic crosses on a one-minute chart to align your 15-minute your, uh, chart, which ideally is aligned with your one-hour chart, which is ideally aligned with your even higher time frames, okay? You can use the fractal geometries together. Okay, how about this? This is pound-yen. Tell me about the pound yen one hour chart, up or down. Market is up, 
Okay, what does that tell you? You only want to be long on a 15 minute chart, right? So take profit here, go long here. Notice that the 55 is in support, and boom. And here, ride the five, ride the five, ride the five, ride the five. We're riding the five. Japanese yen is super weak for some reason. Okay, and your confidence should stay high because even on the one minute chart, we're riding on top of that 21. The market is up on the one minute chart. The market is up on a 15 minute chart. The market is up on a uh, one hour chart. Are you confident going long or not? You know, some people, some only amateurs, by the way, would say, oh, man, it's just gone too far. There's just no way it could go any farther. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It can go as far as it wants to go. You're not in control. I'm not in control. Okay, global money flow is in control. So you should use the analysis here and decide how confident you are in direction. And right now, boom, this just kicked off that 55 and took off like a rocket ship. You know what? As long as we're riding above that 21, I'm going to stay long. Maybe I'll even wait for MACD to cross down on a one minute. Or maybe I'll want the 2155 cross to t cross, cross down on a one minute just for an opportunity to take profit. Okay? But I'm confident. I'm super confident based on the three time frames all saying the same thing. The path of least resistance. Okay, let's end uh, on a powerful note here. You ever trade the news? Yeah, you know what? News happens all the time in Forex, right? Economic uh, uh, announcements are scheduled every single day in Forex here in the United States, but it could be in Europe, it could be in England, it could be in Asia. All these things are very, very important, okay? Now, the thing is, fundamentals are created by these economic reports, most of them, right? Because what they tell you is the, uh, the health of an economy. I read newspapers and publications all the time from um, the United States, Okay, things like the Wall Street Journal and the Investor Business Daily and other and other such things. Very important because the United States is the largest economy in the world and holds reserve currency of the world. So we care about the USD. But I also get uh, newspapers flown in from Japan. Yeah, on a regular basis because Japan is the number two economy in the world and I care about that. I also read the Financial Times and I also get the economists that talk a lot about what's happening in England and Europe because I care about those places too. I care about the British pound. I care about the euro. Okay, so you need to know the health of these economies and what they're thinking. It's my way of having boots in the ground in England and Europe and the United States and Japan all at once. I want to know what's on the hearts and the minds of these people because it shows me whether I should be bullish or bearish on their particular currency, right? Fundamentals. Now, news trade is not fundamentals. News, when news hits, when the economic numbers hit, the, the, the wires. Um, I'm trading the emotion first. Now, I can do the analysis. I can, I can give you nice little charts that show, you know, how good the numbers were and how, 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 how to compare them to the, the, the historics of the numbers and how much, uh, how much it, each number was a surprise. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, a news scalp, a news trade has nothing to do with fundamentals. Okay, it really doesn't have to do a whole lot with technicals either. What I'm trying to do is trade the market's reaction to the number. Now, we're talking about very, very short term here, okay? So differentiate this from long-term fundamental analysis, okay? When non-farm payrolls comes out, for example, boom! Was it a huge number? Was it a surprise? Was it a massively negative number? And if so, how does that affect the market right here, right now, in the short term? How emotional was the market? Did it freak traders out, yes or no? That's what I'm trading. Not the number, but the market's reaction to the number. I can take the numbers, what they mean, and add that to my fundamental bias and use that for my long-term trading. But a news trade is something specific, okay? You should be profitable on this trade within seconds. If you're not profitable within 25, 30 seconds, um, something might be going real wrong. And I'd rather you take a loss when it's small and insignificant than ride this out. Because this is not where you're a tough guy. Where you're like, oh, yeah, man. Oh, that number was so great. Well, you have, how many times have you seen good numbers come out and that currency tanks? The exact opposite of what you thought. Well, it's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact, all that kind of stuff. Well, you know what? Get over it. Don't think that way anymore. Okay? Just because a number is good doesn't mean the currency has to gain value. Remember, you're not in control. So your, your logic is nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. Don't think logically. Okay? You're not in control. It's what the hedge fund managers care. It's what the central bankers care about that matters. So if the currency wants to fall, 
even though there was good numbers and so be it short don't get in the way so if you pull the trigger and in a minute or two you're you're negative this is not where you're tough and you're like oh i'm going to ride this out because that that number was so good and i can't i just can't believe that this currency is not going to gain value that is a death wish my friend okay so if you're going to trade the news you're either going to be a profitable in seconds using this methodology or you're not going to trade okay as soon as you can and it might be 20 30 40 seconds might be a minute but you're going to move your stop to break even take risk off the table right away this is sort of a get lucky trade pop your trade in based on the methodology and rules of engagement that i'm going to line out here okay so you got to be ready and if it goes your way it goes your way if it doesn't go your way you don't trade you walk you have rules of engagement okay you're not allowed to just walk up and down the streets shooting people you have rules of engagement you can't fire unless fired upon okay you know what i'm talking about rules of engagement you can't be blind which means you have to be quick all right, if someone's shooting at you, you can't stop and call the general. You can't call your commander, all right? Call your platoon leader, and the platoon leader calls the commander, and the commander calls the general, and the general calls the chief of staff, and the chief, you know, <laughs> you know uh, whatever, and it works its way to the president of the United States. You're like, hey, you know, what should we do down here? There's an insurgent shooting at us. And the president says, well, why don't you shoot back? And then it goes all the way down, and the, the, guy, the soldier on the street's laying there dead because he's already been shot all right you got to make decisions you know your rules of engagement you've been trained you should have the discipline to carry it out so either uh the new setup happens exactly to according to your rules of engagement and if so you fire the trigger uh you pull the trigger and if not you walk away you have to have the patience and you have to have the discipline if you don't have the patience and discipline yet to carry this out with a demo account then you're not allowed my friend you're not allowed to try this it's only for the this is, by the way, the, remember the, the title of this presentation, Advanced Forex Trading Tactics? So if you're not ready, to, if you're not an advanced trader, then this is not an option for you. It's not available. It's not in the cards. You're not ready. Because if you're not ready, you're going to freak out, throw your money away, and blow it. Okay? This is only for the advanced traders. Okay? Oh, and that's what I mean. So you don't need a comedic meeting or a group hug. You've been trained. You know how to carry out your rules of engagement, and you either do it right or you don't do this at all, okay? So what we're looking for is the reaction, okay? So the news comes out, boom, big red candle, or boom, red green candle, all right? Good. Let it go. I, You're not pulling the trigger right before the news comes out, and you're not pulling the trigger when news just came out, right? Not before or right after. The reason for that is, you know, brokers have variable spreads. Stops can be jumped. Um, the risk is just unbelievably high. You'd have to be foolish, in my humble opinion. Now, I'm a, I'm a very, very conservative trader. So some of you guys may be doing those things, and you like straddling the news and all that kind of stuff. I don't do it. That, that's boring to me, okay? All right? I'm a conservative trader. So... I'm going to trade after the news, after I have time to do my analysis based on what I think the market is doing in reaction to the news, okay? Because trading before or after is too risky. Ratchet down your risk, okay? You don't need to trade when prices all over the place and stops are being jumped and, and there's gapping and slippage and uh, uh, high variable spreads and whatever. Just let it go, bro. Okay, so you're going to get lit big green candles, and it's just going to blow right through the weak levels of support and resistance. Just blow right through them. But there's always going to be a top and always going to be a bottom. Okay, I've been trading for years and years and years and years and years. It's very few times that it just goes like a rocket ship and never comes back. If it does, hey, you never pulled the trigger, you never lost any money, you're a hero. Okay, whatever. But the vast majority of the time, what happens is it's going to pick a direction. It's going to blow through support and resistance until it gets up to a line in the sand that it just can't break and then pulls back. Aha! That's the first step, okay? So let it go. Let it identify support and resistance. Let it identify direction and then draw a line in the sand. So if you get a huge green candle, you're only allowed to consider going long. I didn't say go long. You're only allowed to consider going long. And if the son of a gun goes green, 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 red, 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 totally reverses, you don't do anything. You will not trade reversals. You repeat, you will not trade reversals. If it goes green, you're only looking for opportunities to go green as well. That's it. But you don't buy at the top. You need a pullback. You need to buy at the bottom. This is what we're looking for. 
okay and so if we get a super 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 deviation from um, from what was expected in the news numbers then you're going to get you're, you're going to need to adjust your expectations okay so if you get a super big surprise the pullback is not going to be as great so it's going to go green 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 red green 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 okay but if it, if it's you know somewhat more than expected which is usual okay then you're going to get green 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 red 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 green 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 a normal okay let's say 618 fibonacci retracement whatever versus a 382 that's all align your expectations be more aggressive when it's a bigger surprise be less aggressive when it's more uh um as expected okay that's the name of the game when it comes to forex is how do you adjust your expectations okay two ways of doing this trade one is considered the aggressive conservative <laughs> and the other is conservative conservative the sniper trade means you're firing from a distance all right you don't put snipers on the front line doesn't make any sense all right they're not wearing <laughs> they don't have much protection okay and they can't fire their weapon very quickly you got to put them way at the back okay and they fire from a difference um so because of this they're 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 going to get in early into the, these news trades and because of that they're, they're going to be closer to their stop loss so they're going to risk less when they initially pull the trigger and if they're lucky and this works out they're actually going to make more money okay so it's aggressive but it's conservative it's kind of weird right so their stop is very very close which means when you set this trade up your your opportunity you know you may lose but it'll be very very little and if you win it's going to be more because you're you're going to just have more pips okay but you get but you can get knocked out a lot faster but it's not a lot of pips okay now the opposite of that is the bayonet trading you know what a bayonet is yeah, that's where you put the the knife at the end of your uh of your rifle because you're so close to the enemy that you might be even too close to shoot i mean this is going to get messy you're right on the front line okay that's the second way of doing it okay it's the conservative conservative which means uh what we're looking for is a breakout trade a higher high so if we get green 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 and then a uh, red red and then green 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 and then as soon as it makes a higher high you're long because what you did is you charge the line charge boom and you break through the line make a higher high and you rally that's what you're looking for that's the bayonet trade now very often you're not going to get this trade because it never it rallies okay which means the sniper trades traders either got a, a small profit or got kicked out of break even you're going to get you're going to break even probably at least half the time on this stuff okay but if you don't then you get lucky and you make pips right remember you moved your stop in seconds to to remove risk so you're going to get break even a lot on this trade okay and then the bayonet trade is where you go far and you break a higher high and off you go now quite often it never makes a higher high so like i said the uh, sniper traders will break even the bayonet traders uh, never had a chance anyways okay now because it's more conservative you're only going to trade on the higher high but you're not going to make as many pips okay less reward uh, but it is less risk okay so let's go through it Let, let's put some images in your mind okay what i'm looking for is the line in the sand so green 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 red there you go that resistance was held any other resistance like this high here was just broken broke right through that that high made a higher high and then down down draw that line in the sand there you go that's where you're going to put your infantry all right your bayonet traders that's the line they're going to watch now the sniper traders you got to set up behind lines and uh, fire at that line from a distance right so where's that going to happen you want to place them somewhere between the 382 and the 618 fibonacci retracement the last line in the sand is 786 which means if you go along in here your stop is going to be like i'm telling you like less than maybe only 10 pips away most ideal is 382 to 618 if it's a super surprise like i said probably find support at the 382 if it's sort of as expected maybe a 50 percent or a 618 um okay so what you're looking for is when you think it's found support in here then you want to go along only going in the direction of the initial response and you can see with all the green candles you're thinking long or not long okay you can only go long so there you go in this particular case it's not the best idea you know, it's not the most ideal trade it came all the way back to the 786 but boom and here it seems like it held right that clearly held what's the next candle green it was way up here third candle still above the 786 and now you got a 5-8 cross to the upside this is a one minute chart guys one minute so you had uh, one two three minutes after the news all green four five red 
and then all of a sudden we find support above the 786 and look at this 5a cross price is technically up here somewhere in here you should be long put your stop right below the 786 you're risking uh, about 15 maybe 18 pips <laughs> okay but look at one two three minutes have gone long so if you've gone long here uh, and then then we get you know this next green candle and the 5a cross you're probably already moving your stop let's see what happened uh, a few minutes later yeah so by the time you got this big green candle now we're talking about two and a half minutes after you went long after this 5a cross and your stop loss is here move it to break even now you're in here there's your break even right and made a higher high higher low and it's already going up so now you got your stop up here so you were so your stop was at let's say 55 and then your stop is at break even at 70 or at, at 65 now your stop is maybe at 70 or even higher okay and you're watching this on a one minute chart so the the bayonet trade or sorry the sniper traders are already profitable stop loss already at break even or locking in a small profit and the bayonet traders are getting ready and off we go boom we make a higher high all right, now the ba uh, the sniper traders are doing very well. They're locking in about 25, 30 pips already, and the bayonet traders are, are, are charging the line here. And off we go. Went to a 382 and maybe even farther. Now, 786 predicts a 121.4 as the top, which is right around this 149.00 um, psych level. In this case, it broke a little higher. It's right at that psych level. Great opportunity to consider uh, moving your stop to, take pro uh, to, to protect profit. That's it. Wow. Fractal geometry, chaos theory um, to teach you how to use uh, intermarket analysis and multiple time frames. Gave you example, 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 example of how to put them all together and understand those relationships. And even taught you how to use um, uh, or swing trade with the 2155, scalp trade with the 5A cross uh, on a one minute chart, right? And then, of course, taught you how to uh, put this all together for those uh, moments in time where technicals and fundamentals don't mean a thing when the whole market is moving purely on emotion. And that last scalp trade I just showed you, you're going to break even a lot. If you do it right, you're going to break even 50, 60 percent of the time. But you'll you'll take either the tiniest little losses or, or, or no losses at all. OK, but you got to do it right. If you're even slow, if you flinch for a second, you're not ready. So you have to practice all of this, whether it's swing trading, spot Spot trading, scalping, or news trading, you must, you must practice on a demo account until you have a track record of success using a uh, that demo account, okay, applying the methodology of a demo account. If you went right in and started doing this with a, with a live account, then you're foolish. There's no other way to say it. You're just burning the money. In fact, here's something better, all right? Go out to your backyard and uh, get a fire pit okay a big fire pit then invite all your friends and all your family over a huge party right and everyone's having a good time your backyard is filled with a hundred people of your closest friends and relatives and then uh, right you know right in prime time go out there and say hey everyone let, gather around gather around the fire pit I want to say a few words and you say and they're like great I say yeah I, I have this great idea let me share it with you okay and you get a fire going and then you, you open up your gym bag and it's filled with $10,000 worth of cash, okay? And with all your friends and all your uh, relatives and all uh, uh, standing there, propose a toast and say, I just, I want, this is for the memories, folks. And everyone takes a drink and then you start burning your cash in the fire pit. Take out $10,000 in cash. Just dump it in there. Fives, tens, ones, hundreds, just burn it all up. 10000 in cash. And everyone will cheer, yeah! And you know what, 25 years later, they'll come up to you, your, your, your friend, and say, oh, buddy, you remember that time years ago? We had that big party in your backyard, and you came out and you burned $10,000 in cash in your fire pit. That was the funniest thing ever. I couldn't stop laughing. I'll never forget that. And you'll laugh, too, and you're like, yeah, that was one for the, oh, for the record books, man. That was hilarious, okay? That sure beats... Losing ten thousand dollars in forex because you traded before you're ready, and you're ashamed of losing ten thousand. And people say, "Hey, how's that forex thing going?" And you're like, mm, "Well, whatever." Hey, and you want to talk about the weather, or the football game, or whatever. You know what? You need to wait 
until you have a track record of success using a demo account. You should not be ashamed of losing money in Forex. You should be ashamed of throwing your money away in Forex because you're trading a live account before you're ready. I just did a presentation on very advanced stuff. Now, the, the advanced part isn't understanding the technicals and fundamentals, okay? It doesn't take long, and hopefully this presentation opened your eyes to a lot of things. The advanced part is having the patience and discipline to carry out the methodology methodology and training the way you've been taught okay you're if you're not ready you're not going to have the patience and discipline to do the sniper trade right and you're not going to be able to swing trade you're not going to be able to scalp trade you're not going to you're, you're going to make mistakes because you're not ready do not trade real money until you have a track record of success which means you know for a fact based on looking at your demo account that the methodology works for you and you have the capabilities of carrying it out successfully. If you can't do it, then don't trade it. Stay on your demo. I, you know what? I don't care if it takes you two years, three years, ten years. I don't care. It's foolish to throw it away, okay? At least if you got your friends and family together and burned all your money in a huge fire pit, at least you'd get great stories and people would always smile and laugh and you would have a great time anything short of that it's embarrassing okay so do not trade real money until you have a track record of success on a demo account do not trade any of the methods that you've seen here until you know you can carry it out. And the only way you know how to do that is to trade it, trade it, trade it, trade it, trade it, trade it, trade it on a demo account and then have the numbers to back it up. Okay? So anyways, my name is Wayne McDonald, Chief Currency Coach of FXBootCamp.com. Boy. I hope that filled in a lot of gaps for you. I hope you loved it because I love stuff like this. Chaos theory, fractal geometry, scalping, swinging, news trading. Love it. Remember, if, if you have the patience and discipline, Forex is intellectually stimulating and pays a lot better than that old 9 to 5 you used to have. So, uh, hey, welcome to the world of Forex. Enjoy it. I hope it lasts for years and years and years and years. There's room for you, okay? There's room for you. I hope to see you at the top. Take care of yourself. Cheers.